Hello again, and welcome to Pearl Magazine. As AI evolves at breakneck speed, with ChatGPT and deepfakes becoming easy for just about anyone on the internet to learn and use, so are scams using AI. Meaning those phishing emails or text messages you get are sounding more plausible. I spoke with those in cybersecurity and in the legal field about what we can do to protect ourselves from these types of scams. In our latest update, a meteor is set to hit planet Earth in just about an hour. In our latest update. So that one is you. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Maybe a little bit like this, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really yeah. funny. A few years ago, it would have taken a team of people and expensive technology to create a deep fake like this one of cybersecurity expert Wiki Fung's face on football superstar Ronaldo's body. They make uh, me as a Ronaldo. So this is you as Ronaldo? Yes. Or to put my face on Wiki's body. I'm speaking Cantonese. I've become fluent in Cantonese. While using AI to create funny videos is harmless, there is also the threat of using it to scam people. We always see some news, some news that so um, criminals has been leveraging AI voice impersonations, this kind of attack in China. Criminals take away something like uh, four or five million renminbi in just 10 minutes by pretending, hey, I'm your friend. So it is not that difficult. So, so these are a lot of the malicious activities. These informations are uh, impersonation, fake news. According to police, over 90% of cybercrime in the first five months of this year were deception related. Wiki says that with the popularity of AI and people wanting to use it for fun or for business, there's been a rise in URLs with popular AI names. And this is something users need to watch out for since many scams start from the fake sites. On a monthly basis, there's a sharp increase of new domain registration, all related to ChatGPT on AI. The figure is up to 900%. And only tiny of those portion of those is legitimate and real. He says whether it's fake news or the risk of your data security, you shouldn't trust any sites recommended by those you don't know or see on social media. When you're using this chat GPT AI, or even when you someone send you some of the media, some of the social or deepfakes, uh, this kind of uh, digital contents, uh, always, always validate where the source. So if this is come from some reputable channels, um, some of the even news channels, so it's better. Those fake media you want to distinguish, um, you may want to um, take a deep look about so how is the, the gesture of the people, the tone, the voice, to see any unnatural movement. And with much of our data on digital platforms that leverage our biometrics, whether it's social media, health or our finances, this also poses a risk. Companies recognize this and many have increased cybersecurity. We find that uh, Almost 40% of those um, the, the discount com company, they increase their budget, their annual cybersecurity budget from 20% to 46%. So they must leverage AI to uh, some of the technology mach like machine learning, uh, el develop the algorithm to detect this kind of attack. So you suggest fighting machine with machine, AI versus AI. So leveraging AI can actively hunt those threats so you can detect it. It's important to establish this kind of multi-layer of defense. In, if in any case there's breach happens, quickly we discover it, quickly we know where and contain it, and then we need to mitigate it automatically. In the first five months of this year, police arrested almost 2,000 people for deception cases. Every day now, we share our database to the telecommunications company. We share with them the scammers' telephone numbers, uh, URL used, so that they can block the access to these uh, telephone numbers or information for their customer. So at the very first place, the public won't be able to, us, uh, to gain access to that kind of information. Superintendent Baron Chan of the Cybersecurity and Technology Crime Bureau says they not only work with telco companies, but with the banking industry to share information about suspect accounts 
So these industries red flag accounts, telephone numbers, and URLs linked to scams. And while he says it's hard to retrieve money once it's been transferred to a scammer, they're working to help the victims before they press confirm on a remittance. If individual they want to transfer money through fast pay system, we also share our scam database with the bank. Once the public they want to transfer money to a recipient, which is actually indexed in our scam database, the uh, individual will get an alert, so that before they really confirm the transfer, they can think again. He adds they're also working to co-locate bank staff to their coordination center for faster response to stop payments. We hope that once the victim report their case, we can immediately talk to the bank. They can stop the money flow, so that we can help the victims to trace back the money uh, at a quicker manner. And their scam meter puts a tool in the hands of users to check numbers, websites, and company names against their database. A scam meter plus actually have recorded approximately one million searches, and about sixteen percent of which shows are at risk. Among this, about fifty nine percent have been confirmed to be related to fraud cases. Inspector Tyler Chan says that while no live deep fake scams have been reported yet, there are ways to spot live fake video. He used a video of Baron over his face on the right. The technology is actually not that perfect. To crack this type of fraud, citizens can pay attention to the unnaturalness and also ask the other party to slowly cross their face with one finger in front of the camera like this. As you can see, since the computer needs to recalculate these certain changes, you can also ask the person to perform certain actions in front of the camera, such as moving their heads up, down, left, right. When it comes to voice calls from relatives or friends that one might find suspicious, he suggests asking them personal questions to check their identity. Barron says so far only recorded and edited deepfakes have been reported in fraud cases, such as the one with a 25-year-old male who was threatened with blackmail. After、uh, talking on the video call and downloading the, the suspicious apps, he received from the same stranger a deepfake video of him in a pornography video. And then the stranger used the video to blackmail him of ten thousand Hong Kong dollars、uh, game point cards.、Uh, in this case, the victim didn't pay the pay the、uh, ransom, and he reported intelligence to us. Baron says the best thing to do if you suspect a scam is to report it immediately and keep all the correspondence, links, or apps, so the police have more information to use. In the past. Actually, every 20 minutes we have a scan report. But nowadays, in the first five months of this year, every 14 minutes there is a scam that involves victims losing his money. With the rise of AI, is there an urgent need to protect your data? Copyright lawyer Winnie Wang says that aside from your image being protected, literary, musical, and artistic works are protected under copyright laws. Even some computer-generated work is protected. But the development AI has, you know, introduced new questions because the AI has been used、uh, very extensively to the extent that it may replace a lot of human effort,、um, and people may question:、um, Does computer-generated work still cover those work、um, now generated by generative AI? And there's a danger that AI can produce false information. So, if this happens, who takes responsibility? Possibly, it is the human who will have to take the responsibility for the machine, because we possibly could not sue a machine for anything in the court. She points out that most AI sites have a disclaimer that it is only a tool and may create inaccurate information. So it's a user beware situation, and users should double check all information coming from the AI. Currently, different jurisdictions are taking steps to regulate AI. The EU's AI Act has categorized four risk areas for users. The first level of,、uh, they consider is. 
too high risk, such that the news is completely banned in those industries. And in the second level, it is considered high risk, so that um, users need to obtain regulatory approval, um, uh, need to have an authorized representative to be held responsible, um, and they need to comply with a set of very, uh, you know, uh, structured uh, requirements in the law. And the third layer um, is considered as low risk, so that the users only need to be transparent about their use. Um, and the last layer is considered there's basically no risk. She says that some jurisdictions view this as restrictive, such as the UK, where a pro-innovation approach is being taken. When he says they see the development of AI as a creator of opportunities and a tool that is still under development. Since UK has um, encouraged the use of AI, they have seen a surge of uh, private investment in AI technology. So among is all the investment, private investment in the EU area, uh, UK accounts for one third of those investments. Um, so it's about you know, economic development. Like you are saving people for those manual and repetitive labor and encourage people to be more innovative, to be more creative and, and thus contributing more to the development of the whole society. While AI is exciting and continually evolving, the growing pains will persist and humans will have to find a way to work with a technology that's here to stay.